It's summer here. Welcome. Thank you, Godfrey. Thanks for having me. So you have a job now. You have to start now delivering and uh, getting uh, the investments up and running up onto the continent. Let's talk about your focus, uh, where you are hoping you will begin making those first investments. Yeah, Godfrey, it's, it's obviously uh, an exciting time for us. We've managed to get to a situation where we, where we raised uh, as a joint venture between Growth Points uh, and uh, Investec Asset Management a total of $212 million. Is it a first in South Africa, the it's bank and the property company? Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's certainly a first in terms of a JV between these two parties. Right. Uh, obviously, Growth Point uh, Properties has a long history in terms of, you know, originally being formed and unbundled out of Investec, yes. uh, you know, a decade plus ago. So, so there's a long history of working relationships mm. uh, between the two entities. You can't leave each other alone. That's okay. It, it seems so. <laughs> <laughs> so we work well together. But uh, it's an exciting venture, you mm. know, and, and in many ways, I think, uh, you know, in, in terms of something on this scale, it is something new. So, mm -hmm. you know, the mandate of the business is to invest in pan-African real estate. So it's quite, sure. a, it's quite a broad mandate. Right. But I think if we look at that and, and dissect that mandate into, uh, into more sort of focused areas, what we're looking at are sort of key gateway cities, right. as, as we term it. That's a, that's a concept which has been described in Europe, um, you know, at large. And these gateway cities are really, you know, the key cities in which, you know, developed world capital yeah. is happy to flow into, where there's scale okay. um, and growth. Okay, so the next natural question then is, which are those capitals, which yeah. are those cities? So at this point in time, there are about five or six countries, if we talk about that, we, that we're interested in. And the key gateway cities within those countries would include uh, cities such as Accra, okay. so Ghana. You know, the capital of Ghana. Lagos, you know, Lagos is going through some issues at the moment. I yes, think there's yes, some yes. structural reform that needs to, needs to still take place there, but nonetheless, it's probably too big to ignore in time. So okay. Lagos needs to be on the map. Okay. Uh, Nairobi in, in East Nairobi Africa. It is has to be. It, I exactly. It, it is the hub of East Africa. Yeah. Um, it, it will be important over time. Uh, Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, um, a little bit difficult in terms of that government, in terms of our view of being, mm. being naturally business friendly at this point in mm. time. Regulation is an issue. Exactly there, yeah. right. Yeah. But, but in time, you know, it is, it is forecasted to be one of, one of the top 10 largest populations globally yeah. within the next sort of 10 to 15 years. I so was going to make a joke and say the president is saying, go and breed as much as you can, therefore the numbers there will exactly, be very good exactly. for you. But what about Addis? You're not talking about Addis. Yeah, Ethiopia is an interesting, an interesting market. I mean, it is certainly one of the highest growth markets in the, uh, you know, globally at this point in time. A yes. very, very strong uh, population growth as well that's coming out of that market. Yeah. But the reality is, is that if you look at um, our business per se and where we're moving uh, into from an investment point of view, yeah. we need to move where there's some degree of scale. So right. we need to look at, you know, cities that have office towers, retail malls, etc., right. that we can invest into. Okay. Addis is not there yet. So there, there's, there's probably scope for developers yeah. potentially to enter that market. Yeah. Um, some of them still feel even for that it's a little bit early. Yeah. But, but the tra trajectory is there. Yeah. So the next five years or so will be quite interesting. It sounds like Africa ex South Africa. Is that what it is? Completely. In terms of focus? Completely. I and mean, bear in mind that, you know, our largest, uh, or between Investec and, and Growth Point, Growth Point being one of our largest stakeholders in this yeah. venture, yeah. they are the largest REIT, the largest landlord in this country. Right. So it doesn't make sense for us to compete against, you know, our, to our, come our, and our own stakeholders. Against them. Okay. Correct. You didn't mention Cairo. Egypt is, is something that uh, is foreign to us. Um, you know, we are, we are, aiming to stick to regions and, and cities that we know and understand. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't make sense for us to go somewhere where we don't. So, okay. you know, it's largely, uh, to be honest with you, a sub-Saharan African play, right. um, okay. although the mandate is pan-African. Okay. The one exception to that is Morocco. Right. So Morocco is quite interesting. I mean, if you look at Tangier, specifically in the north of, of Morocco, yeah. they have free trade zones there. Um, if you look at the manufacturing capability, Peugeot and Renault have moved their manufacturing plants mm -hmm. to Tangier. You can literally see Spain from across the uh, across the strait. Sure. So, so they are driving their manufacturing and the free trade in terms of tax incentives uh, in Tangier and driving their product into Europe from there. So, so that's an exciting opportunity for us to to potentially look at logistics, right. um, you know, industrial assets, etc., in that uh, part of the world. Yeah, it says here you've been able to raise commitments in excess of two hundred and twelve million dollars, uh, and Growth Point is coming in with fifty million dollars of that. Where did you find the money? The money has been found globally, to okay. be honest. So we have uh, a very select grouping of, of what I could say is arguably some of the, the strongest investors globally. So right. really large pension funds, uh, by and large, not all pension funds, but by yeah. and large, 
uh, pension funds. So I think you know there's there, there's depth in 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 those um, in those investors. There's patience, yeah. and I think you know yeah. that that leads itself into the African story, where you know the the African story from an investment point of view yeah. is not a one day game. You know, it's going to take time to unlock these opportunities and yeah. to do the transactions you asked about. You know the, the deals that we're looking at doing. Yeah. They take time, and we've got to get the the terms yeah. and and the entry point correct. Absolutely. So it sounds to me like from the way you are referring to the African story, like you didn't have to work very hard to get that money. Was it a hard sell? It was a hard sell. It was. Um, I think if we if we brutally honest with you, um, and you and you you just have to look back over the performance of Africa mm -hmm. over the last sort of two to three years. Yeah. It hasn't been it hasn't been strong. You know, I mean, you've had well, you've had the oil little crisis, little particularly yeah. commodity driven. So if you look at the oil the oil effect on West African countries in particular, yeah. Um, you know, you've you've had quite a big down downward trend in terms of Ghana, Nigeria, etc. But by and large, and I think most people are agreeing that we've pretty much bottomed out. Yeah. And Ghana is actually fine. I mean, you 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 you're seeing sort of five odd percent. GDP growth now yeah. consistently in Ghana. Um, Nigeria has, has had probably the worst or been the worst affected out of all of them, but it's That's bottomed true. out. And I think the view is there's some green shoots starting to come through. So our entry point now uh, probably couldn't have been better. Although right. it wasn't by design, yeah. it probably couldn't be better. Absolutely. 212 you are at, is there a target? Is this cap? It's uncapped, so it's a perpetual capital vehicle, which okay. is different to, I think, a lot of the development style private equity funds across the continent, yeah. um, you know, which have had a cap in terms of term, in terms of amount. This is uncapped. We're aiming for this to become one of the leading players in terms of globalizing and, and, and really trying to uh, enhance the capital markets as right. far as real estate is concerned, and that requires a degree of scale. Absolutely. Thank you for coming through, Thomas. Thank you, Godfrey. And all the best. Thomas uh, Riley is the Managing Director of Growth Point Investec African Properties.